Welcome to the first ever kdevops.com video feature. Uh, today I'm reaching out to you over video because I have kind of an interesting project and uh, I thought it would be best done in video rather than a text blog format. Um, I've written a little bit about software the past few months, uh, but software is, is not my only technical passion. Uh, another thing I'm really interested in is hardware. Anything from computer systems to uh, individual components I find uh, very interesting and uh, I was lucky because you know I have a background in experimental physics and in the course of your education as well as working with uh, my experimental group my Arana, I worked with electronics many times uh, so I'm very lucky for that I wouldn't be where I am today without that uh, one, in one particular you know field of electronics that I'm interested in is amateur radio um, uh, amateur radio is extremely interesting to me. Uh, you know, not only can you do things like homebrew radios, um, but you also have you know a fair bit of math and, and scientific knowledge involved, from electronic components to electromagnetic radiation. Uh, so it you know it's a very deep field, and you kind of go as far as you want to take it. Uh, and I hold a general class license from the FCC. And uh, I used to operate on, on two meters back in my undergraduate career. Uh, two meters is uh, considered a very high frequency. It's a short distance communication. You know, you're talking roughly 100 miles or so. And I was talking on what they call a handy talkie uh, over voice. Um, it's just a portable radio unit. And that was, that was fun, but it, it's a little bit like talking on a cell phone. And in addition, you're very limited in that range. Like I mentioned, 100 miles depending on your surrounding terrain and things like that. Um, now they do have repeaters, so you could call into a repeater and talk across the country over network. But uh, I kind of feel like at that point, you might as well be on the internet. Uh, so I, I put, the, put the hobby down for a number of years. But one thing I've been interested in for a long time is communications over uh, a lower frequency. They call it HF which is high frequency as contrasted to that very high frequency, two meters. And, uh, you know, HF's a little bit more faceted. Uh, your communications can go a much longer distance. I mean, you can communicate around the world, depending on the conditions. And there's also kind of a long tradition of homebrew electronics on HF. So people are building their own radios. Uh, they're building their own antenna systems. And uh, there's also quite a bit more thought you have to give to things like um, antenna radiation, uh, ionosphere propagation, things of that nature. Um, and so what, I've, what I have for you today is actually an HF transmitter that I've built on uh, 20 meters. The frequency is 14.318 megahertz. Uh, and it's kind of a combination of you know, individual electronics components uh, there's an Arduino microcontroller running some software that I've written, and, uh, and you can interact with it on, on a computer over a serial port. Um, and this has kind of been a long, you know, long coming dream of mine to actually build a radio set, and, and this is just the start of it. Uh, but I'm excited enough to share it with you today. Um, so the software the Arduino is running is essentially taking text in over a computer serial port and turning that into Morse code uh, because you know Morse code is uh, is it's not really that complex but you know I haven't had the time to really become fluent in it and to become proficient uh, it would take me a while it's not going to happen anytime soon uh, but what I am proficient in is software engineering so I've written the software to speak Morse for me um, so without any more delay let's go ahead and, and maybe check out you know how this is used what it sounds like um, I've got a, a shortwave radio tuned to 14.318 megahertz. It's a Grundig G6 Aviator. It's a pretty nice little shortwave radio if you're interested in doing any uh, shortwave listening at all. I mean, I've heard broadcasts from around the world. Um, and, I mean, any amateur radio operator will tell you it's really the antenna that matters. So this little, you know, metal stick is not much of an antenna at all. But uh, if you had an, an external antenna system, even just a random long wire, uh, you might be surprised what you can pick up. Um, before I start, though, I do want to mention there are a lot of regulations associated with amateur radio. 
and I do have a license, um, but it's important for me to say if you experiment with radio, just make sure you're good in the eyes of the law. Uh, if you're you know, transmitting with misconfigured hardware, even if you're an experienced electronics tinker, it's very possible to cause harmful interference uh, with other electronics in the area. Or even, um, you know, interference with radio signals far away. Uh, so you need to be aware of those things and, and I recommend staying away from high power until you're licensed and you know what you're doing. This rig is very low power and in addition, this is the antenna here, if you can even see it on camera, it's just a wire sticking up and it's going to have very low efficiency for radiation. Uh, so I can pretty much pick up this signal from my living room to my office. I will be able to hear it on the Grundig. So let's go ahead and, and kick up a signal. Uh, what I've got queued up for us is uh, what we call calling CQ, which uh, in radio is a little bit like saying, hey, I'm here and let's chat. So I'll call CQ three times. It gives my call sign and then the pro sign K, which means we're ending the transmission. And this is great because uh, there's, it'd take a long time for me to become this proficient in Morse code. Uh, this is a pretty fast keying speed and a lot of people will have their own opinions on how they like to send Morse code or what they like to hear uh, when receiving Morse code. In, in my program I basically coded it up to be exactly the international standard and there's a configurable speed so if I was to go on the air with this and want to talk to people I'd probably slow it down a little bit that way I hit a, a wider audience um, and uh, you know, this is very simple as it is. It's purely a transmitter. Uh, I was receiving on the shortwave, uh, but there's a lot of work to be done here. In terms of hardware, uh, I'd like to add an antenna system as well as a linear amplifier. Um, and in terms of software, uh, one big thing I need to tackle is the translation of Morse code back to text. Uh, like I said, I, I can't really speak Morse, so if I want to put this rig on the air, I need to have software to be able to translate that back to text for me. And uh, going in both directions, you know, uh, text to Morse, Morse to text, there's a lot of examples on the internet. So if you're interested in trying this, um, you know, just give it a search on the net. Uh, I'll also make my software open source. It's going to be in the Chainsaw repo on my GitHub account. So be sure to check that out. I'm more than happy to accept any comments. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I just want to thank you for uh, joining me on this uh, first video blog, and uh, we'll see you next time.